पश्यन्ति when we sit for meditation our deep desire is that we should experience the highest stage of yoga and sometimes we make it sometimes we don't and there are different stages of yoga and it's important to identify all of them but also just to be aware just sitting for yoga is important and the second thing is the stage in the sense that if i've followed the discipline of baba's time table and then if i'm in madhuban or i have an opportunity at home for extra fine but following that discipline of actually making time to be with baba that's a very important step and then within that whichever stage it is i manage to reach it's fine it's not a competition and so let me enjoy the stage that i'm drawn to and in a very natural way i'll move further on and in my journey and i'll be able to come to what baba describes as the seed stage and so let me describe briefly the other stages that we experience before we get to the seed stage and also to mention that baba only started talking about the seed stage around the 60s and that to later in the 60s not the early part of the 60s so from about 64 65 onwards then baba was mentioning this and there was a very beautiful scene that i had the good fortune to observe and that was a time when it would have been 1966 or 67 and i wasn't properly in gyan but i was young and kumari and so and connected with baba since childhood so i came to madhuban and of course once you're in madhuban baba's magic takes over and you follow everything in terms of timetable and around 10 10:30 baba left his room and came across the courtyard and baba was walking to those steps which lead up above nirabhai's office that area had been just constructed and so rooms hadn't yet been designated and i knew that baba was headed to that room above the stairs and what was happening there was what baba called a seminar and baba had invited all the senior brothers and the dadis and a few senior sisters to that meeting and baba had said that you start your meeting and i'll come and join you later and so they would have started their meeting and in fact it would have been a bit later and baba was walking across the courtyard to go there and i knew that that's where baba was headed and baba saw me sitting on the wall the famous pandupavan wall <laughs> where people still sit today and i was sitting there cutting some nuts and lachudadi had i was 16 17 so lachudadi had given me a big thali a big plate with nuts and it was going to keep me occupied and out of mischief for several hours and if you just keep cutting <laughs> and baba walked by and called me across and so the nuts got left and i went across and Baba didn't say anything but Baba just pulled me by the hand and I just followed. Then when we came to the steps I thought I'm not going to go to the meeting but Baba pulled me 
So again, followed Baba up the steps and Baba came to the room and Baba was taking off his slippers to go into the room and everybody was seated in a circle on the floor. No chairs, not for Baba, not for anyone else. And again I thought, it's not my place to be there. But Baba again pulled me. And so Baba went across and sat in the space in the front and I just sat on the threshold just at that edge because the circle was the daddies and seniors. But I had this amazing opportunity to witness what happened in that meeting. And Baba gave drishti and then said, what have children been discussing? And Didi Manmoini said, Baba, there were three topics we raised. One was about somebody doing service tours like Mama used to do. And so that was another whole discussion. Baba gave a very clear answer about what and how and why. And the second question was about yoga. And Dati Prakashmani spoke and she said, she pulled out a little notebook and something she'd written on that. And she said to Baba, Baba, you've been talking about seed stage yoga. And I'm not sure that I've understood exactly what you mean. But if I've understood correctly, then my seed stage yoga is in Amrit Vela. I had good yoga, but seed stage yoga was just five, seven minutes. Then it was time for Murli, and during Murli, I can't say it was seed stage yoga. It was love for Baba and love for the Murli, but not seed stage. And then, through the day, it was again chit-chat and Murli and Gyan with others, but not really seed stage. And then, in the evening when we had yoga, and again it was just a few minutes, so she went through the whole day, and at the end of the day it would have been about 20 minutes seed stage yoga, and she said, Baba, this isn't enough, but am I calculating it correctly? And Baba gave her very sweet drishti and said, the child is very honest, and yes, this is what Baba would have expected, that it wouldn't be more than a few minutes each time, but you've started keeping this record now continue, and it will definitely continue to increase. And so, if I'm thinking about the higher stage of yoga, and I'm only managing a few minutes, it's okay. It's okay. But that's the stage in which our sins are actually burnt away. It's the fire of yoga, it's the cleansing, the purification, it's the way in which our sanskars will finally be transformed. Why I say finally? Because for some of us, Baba's children, you're new, and so your journey has started recently. But for some of us, it's been decades and after decades, you still see old sun scars. And then you wonder, you know, I've been with Baba all this time, and so how come my sun scars haven't changed? And the reason is that with yoga power and the disciplines, <clears throat> that commitment to following the disciplines, we've managed to take care of our sun scars so that they don't erupt but we actually haven't managed to transform them. And so if today, now I'm at the point where I say, I really deeply, sincerely want to transform my sanskars so that the old sanskars, or I should say the middling sanskars of this past half kalpa finish, and my original sanskars, the old old sanskars, the original ones, emerge once again, then I need tapasya. I need to spend 
extended time in yoga so that I have a chance to build up that stage. And in that, then yes, the sanskars are going to melt, the alloy is removed, and the soul is purified, and you get to that stage, which is the stage of purity that when I came down from Paramdham, I came down pure Satupradhan, and that's the stage I want to attain here before I go up again. Because going up, yes, there'll be a settlement with Dharamraj, but it's not transformative in terms of sanskaras. It's a settlement, which is different. But through yoga, I'm finishing, but also emerging. And so that emergence of the new sanskaras, the deity sanskaras, should be visible here and now. So that I know for myself that, yes, that divine being that I am originally is real. It's me. It's not just a story I'm hearing, but it's reality, the me that is the original me. And that's the stage I go home with. That's the stage I come down with. And so the seed stage is the stage I want to achieve. And the stages are the stages that you know about. The first stage, just simply initiation, letting the mind begin to flow in a pure direction. The stage before, the mind is all over the place, but you start and you're making your mind move in the direction of Gyan. Then meditation, and you're focusing on the awareness of the self and of God and the home. And after meditation, you're coming to that stage which is really the yoga, now my connection with God, my relationship with God, and I'm experimenting with all the different stages, relationships that Baba talks about in the Murali. The experiments we do in terms of practicing the things that Baba's talked about in the Murali would be within that stage of meditation and yoga. I'll give you an example. Baba talks about the snake shedding the skin. It's not just an image that Baba's using. It's a method of experimentation that Baba's teaching me. And so let me experiment with that method. In meditation, connected with Baba, can I feel the skin dropping away and I, the soul, free from the skin, connected? And then, yes, I come back into the skin and I come back and do what I need to do. But that experience of total detachment from the body is a very powerful experience that I need to cultivate. And so, whichever image Baba's using, let me experiment with each one of those images and it'll make my meditation, my yoga, constantly fresh and it will always make it very powerful for me because the human mind very easily gets bored. And this is why people who chant mantras after some time, maybe some years, the mind just gets bored and the mantra isn't working anymore. It's the constant repetition of that one word. And the word is going on. It's like the chant that's automatic, autopilot, but the mind is going elsewhere. It's no longer serving a purpose because the mind is distracted. And so Baba's method of bringing the mind back on track, of allowing the mind to move in the right direction and then learning to focus, concentrate, it's a very natural method that Baba's teaching. And each one of these stages is important in their own right. For example, 
if I haven't reflected on all the ideas of Gyan, the soul and God, the quality of my faith won't be as deep. If I've been thinking and reflecting on these aspects in yoga, my faith is becoming deeper and stronger because I'm validating all these things for myself. I've heard it, but as I reflect on it, I experiment with it, I feel it. And so now nobody can convince you that there isn't a soul. You've experienced that you are a soul. You've understood clearly. In the same way, if anybody tries to convince you that Shiv Baba isn't God, there's another God somewhere, somehow, you'll say, no, I, I understand and I believe it, I've experienced it. So the power of faith comes through our experimentation and our experience. The relationships with Baba, like Baba's very clearly explained, if I don't experiment with that, then there will always be an external relationship that will pull me, whichever one it may be that I haven't practiced and experienced, because that will leave an empty space in the soul that's going to pull the soul in an external direction, instead of my experiment and the inner direction, and I experience that. And so the fullness that Baba spoke about today May God, your companion, have the Almighty with you, the one who has everything, and you'll begin to feel yourself becoming full and close to God. And having done all of this, then the mind is automatically in a space in which there is stillness, silence, but it's a natural state that has been arrived at by using the energy of the mind in the right way. It's not empty, it's not passive, it's not happening just by chance. It's happening in a very specific, concerted effort in that that's the direction I want to move in slowing down the speed of my thoughts, having more time between thoughts, so that the spaces between the thoughts are longer, and between the thoughts and those spaces of silence, there is experience. And that experience of the seed stage in my home, in that world of light, infinite light, no walls, no boundaries, a place of total purity, a place of complete stillness. In that space, I am. I am a soul. I am the pure soul. I am with God, and just as God is in the seed form, everything merged. I, the soul, in that seed stage in which there's no thoughts, but the fullness of the experience. I am the embodiment of peace. I am the embodiment of love. Now I'm not thinking about peace or love. I'm experiencing my own original stage of peace, of love, of purity, of truth, of joy. And so other things are melting away the sins are being left behind, the impurities are coming away, they're dissolving. And you can see why this is the highest stage of yoga. You're not putting a label 
on that stage, in that moment, later you'll say, that really was a whole experience of peace or baba or love or truth. A sense of coming out from that fire of yoga clean, refreshed. So when you see someone come out of Baba's room or out of the yoga with a face sparkling, you know that that time has been with Baba. And if someone comes out of the room with a headache and says, oh my goodness, that was such an effort, a big difference. <laughs> And so where I'm trying to have yoga and where there is yoga and it's natural, very different stages. Two things I need to be totally aware of to make sure that when I sit for yoga, I'm able to come to that seed stage. Through the day, the quality of my thinking. What is it I'm thinking about? Am I thinking about Gyan? If I'm thinking about my work at the time of work and I'm focused on my work, no problem, that's fine. Because at that moment, that's what I need to do. And that's not waste. But the other times, when you're working and you're focused, it's not waste, but it's the rest of the time in which I'm thinking about this one, that one, this thing, that thing, all of that. So instead of letting time go to waste, the practice of coming back to, what did Baba say today? Or having a chat with Baba. You know how if you're close to somebody, you look for a moment to be able to connect with them. You send a little message, you phone them, whatever. And now you're connected to Baba. And so you have a chat with Baba. You connect with Baba in that way. And so keeping the path of truth alive you know, we say satsang, this gathering, but satsang is also just simply the company with the truth, not just this company, but that inner company with the truth. And so let me be able to focus on that through the day and remove waste thoughts. And secondly, am I able to merge thoughts quickly and put a full stop. Something's happening and a quick full stop. And that's also coming back to the seed. So the attention on thoughts generally, but specifically also with situations, something said, something's done, happened, full stop. How quickly can I actually put the full stop? And so this discipline that I observe through the day means that when I want to sit for yoga, it's going to be easier. If I haven't been practicing this, then it's going to be more difficult because my time for sitting in yoga is going to be taken up with first finishing the things out there then the inner journey and not being distracted and pulled by anything. So it takes checking, it takes attention, but most of all, it takes my interest. If you're interested in something, you do it. You don't complain, it's difficult. You don't keep saying how, why. You're interested, you do it. And so, what is the focus of my interest? 
there's a word that comes in the Murali's and that is vairagya. And usually we translate vairagya as disinterest, which is true. It's a correct translation. But there's another interpretation of this word. And a definition would be where all the passions have been cooled. And so if, the, if you have a passion about anything out there, that's where your thoughts are going to go. That's where your interest lies, and it's going to take you out there. Even service. If my passion is service, on the one side, great, I'm going to do good things. But on the other side, it's also something out there. And wonderful ideas of service in yoga is not yoga. It's great to think of service, it's great to plan service, but it's not yoga. And so that stage where all other passions have finished and my interest, my passion is now to be with God and experience that stage of total, total union the seed stage, I, the seed, in the presence of God, the seed, in which everything is mine. I don't have to think about it, I don't have to ask about it, it's there. This is who I am. As is my parent, so am I. And so the more I can practice this, the more I'm clean and pure, the more I'm prepared to go home. And so, enjoy your yoga bhati, enjoy the experience, and keep it with you. Because once you've had a taste of it, then it's easy to go back to it again and again. That's the beauty of the method that Baba teaches. In bhakti, Maybe you've done intense effort and you get a tiny, tiny glimpse of that love or that joy. And then the rest of your life you're trying to get it, but you don't know how it came. You don't know how it happened, so there's no method. But Baba shows us very clear steps to go so that we're able to get to that experience. Enjoy the Bhati. Om Shanti.